My wife and I are up to six kids now, and after the last one, she said, I'm done not birthing any more kids. So before I went to go get a procedure to make that happen, I decided to go get my testosterone level checked because for one, I've gotten blood work done before, but I've never actually seen my testosterone, just routine stuff at my doctor. So I wanted to get a good baseline for what my physique looks like right now, see what my levels are, be able to have something to compare to in the future to see if they're dropping. And uh, just interested to know what they are. But also, I did some research ahead of time to see, does getting a vasectomy make your testosterone level go down? And everything said no, it shouldn't affect that at all. But I still want to get a baseline and find out. And then I got my testosterone checked again four months later. And now that we have the result, it seems that... So I'm not going to sit here and make you wait till the end of the video to find out my initial testosterone levels when I got it checked in October of last year were 522.2 nanograms per deciliter. So pretty much right in the middle of the reference range for normal healthy male my age. So then when I got it checked again a couple months ago, it was down to 511. So I mean, we're talking 10 nanograms per deciliter and I really doubt that has anything to do with the vasectomy because when it comes to your testosterone levels for guys, like I try to make sure when I'm getting my blood work done now, I list what time of day I did it. And the first one was at 11.45 in the morning and then the second one was at 9.45, which actually earlier in the day, typically is when your testosterone levels are gonna be higher for a natural person. And then they're gonna start to dip throughout the rest of the day. So if anything, you would think it would have been a little bit higher in the morning, but it wasn't. And then I fasted the same amount of time, did all the same stuff, made sure I didn't take vitamins. But sleep is one of the big things that can really affect it. So if you don't get a good night's sleep, from what I read, it was around a 10 to 15% drop you can experience in your testosterone levels just by having bad sleep for a few nights in a row. And the longer that goes, the more it can affect you. So I mean, at my level, that's like 50 to 75 nanograms per deciliter just from sleep variations and then time of day and all that. Trying to keep it as consistent as I can, but 10 nanogram per deciliter for a natural guy, I don't think that's anything to worry about. It's really close to what it was before. So been exercising the same, eating the same, doing a lot of cardio, being healthy, so not a problem there. But how the procedure works, just in case you're wondering, you know, why do you think it could affect your testosterone or whatever, because you're basically keeping sperm from getting out. But what the doctors do is they take the tube that takes the sperm from the testicles to where it gets into the semen, and they basically just pull that out, cut it, and solder it so that the sperm can't make its way up there. So you're still producing sperm, you're still producing testosterone like you normally would. It's not like you're getting castrated and they're taking your nuts off. And uh, the sperm just absorbs back into your body. So who knows, maybe that'll make your testosterone go up. But I doubt it. But for strength, I haven't had any issues. Um, my lifts have still been going up. I'm slowly, progressively overloading. Not having any problems there. I couldn't lift. I wasn't supposed to lift anything really for the first 10 days to two weeks. They said the danger, they said it could, you could recover quicker, but the danger is, you know, if you're bearing down, if you're to do a squat or something like that, it puts a lot of pressure on it. You can make blood clots happen. I was like, you know what? Is it really worth my time to go to the gym to try to not lose any gains? Like I just planned to deload for that first week. And then the second week I went back to the gym a couple times and I did a couple full body workouts, literally like, 50% of the weights I normally do and I did everything seated. So I did like leg extensions and leg curls seated with half the weight I normally do. Just to get a little bit of a pump, go through the motion. Same thing like on a shoulder machine, a pull up machine where you got your knees on there and it's supporting you, a chest press machine. Just some major compound movements to kind of hit all my major muscles. Just a little bit, a little bit to stimulate them, maintain where they are and did it again a few days later. And then after two weeks, I started working back into my normal exercises. And uh, again, I think I went up to like 70% of the weight that I use. I slowly worked my way back up um, over the next couple weeks to what I was doing before, and I didn't have any problems with it. So they tell you don't lift really heavy for a month. I guess it depends on the doctor you're with. And I didn't, because I was like, you know what? My joints can take a break my uh, lower back, you know, try to heal up as many things as I can before I start hitting it hard again. And I have, I just hit a PR a couple days ago on bench, like 210 for 11. Um, my leg presses have been going up a bunch. And I just started doing rows on a new seal row bench that I'm working on. So I'm kind of getting the feel for that 
and uh, slowly progressing that as well. But strength has been good. I haven't had any issues. One of my friends who had it done, like he said, almost every day, it feels like he got kicked in the balls. Almost once a day, I was like, wow, that's gonna stink if that happens. But it turns out that if that is the case, then something didn't heal right and they can go in and fix it because I talked to another person before I did mine who said they had something similar, went back, they redid something, and then he never had problems again. Thankfully, that wasn't an issue. For me, never had problems. Um, I did have another friend who said it was just really tender for a long time, and then he actually went and got it reversed and then didn't have any problems after that. So if there is something wrong, probably want to go back to the doctor and get it checked because it's not supposed to hurt. I mean, there's some soreness, tenderness, you get used to it after a few months though. Didn't have any issues. Yep. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Testosterone levels shouldn't go down if you're staying healthy, staying on top of your diet, your training and all that. Shouldn't be a factor. I suggest you have lots of kids before you do something like that. But if you have any questions, post them down below. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Got lots of stuff on diet, training, and lifestyle stuff in general. And I'll see you soon.